So per Dan Raphael, Dan Raphael, a very notable boxing journalist, one of the more high-powered boxing journalists. He has the inside takes. He's even more seen as more real than Michael Coppinger, seen as that he has more sources and more inside power than Michael Coppinger. He has now reported on his Twitter. In case anyone says I'm clickbaiting, like a lot of uh, people said on my Tank Davis video, which I was not. If you want to clickbait, it's not hard, bro. I could be covering these YouTube boxing matches between guys like uh, that when KSI's brother fought the other day or something like that. But I don't do that. That's not my style, man. I'm a hardcore boxing fan covering hardcore boxing matches. Now let's get to the point. Hamie Mangia and Daniel Jacobs are in talks for a summer showdown at a catch weight of 164. Daniel Jacobs, to my knowledge, has fought his past few fights. At 168, I even think he had a fight. At 175, let me just search up his name real, real quick on uh, box work. Just hang on with me a second. Daniel Jacobs obviously is coming off a disputed loss, a controversial loss against John Ryder. A lot of people claim to his robbery. I am not of the people that claim to his robbery. I'm not saying I thought John Ryder won the fight. I thought Daniel Jacobs won that fight. I gave. The first six rounds to Danny Jacobs. From round 7 to 11, all to John Ryder. And then round uh, 12 to Danny Jacobs. But at the same time, I only had five clear rounds for Jacobs and three clear rounds for John Ryder. I thought there were four swing rounds. I swung two to each fighter. So seeing that be 115, it could have been anywhere between 115 and 113 Ryder to 117 and 11 Jacobs. Obviously, when you get a fight like that, away not on home soil, you're not going to get the decision. I'm telling you right now. When the fight could be for the other guy, 115-113, on his soil, he's going to get that fight. So let's look at Dan Jacobs just real quick. Yeah, he's, No, he has not fought at like heavyweight before. He fought against uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who, who is a light, who's fought as low as middleweight before at 168. Julio did, did miss weight for that fight. He fought Gabriel Rosado at 168. I thought he lost that fight. I thought Gabriel Rosado took eight rounds of that fight. But I have not rewatched it. And I will admit I am a Gabriel Rosado fan. So that could affect my bias. But I thought Rosado clearly won that fight. Watching it live. And then uh, he lost a close decision to John Ryder at 160. And I also thought that Chavez was competitive before quitting against Jacobs. But he has zero heart. I thought he lost a clear decision against Canelo. A lot, a lot of people thought it was a close fight. I have not watched the Sergei Divrinchuko fight in a minute. I don't have any opinion about that fight. So yeah, that's uh, Daniel Jacobs for you guys. He, has, he hasn't had an impressive performance since stopping Sergei Omora. 2016, or you could say when he edged out Golovkin. I thought he edged out Golovkin when they fought. I had to buy a point for Jacobs, 114, 113, but I guess I can't be mad at Golovkin getting the decision. Rewatching the other day, I had it 115, 112 for Jacobs. So that's Jacobs for you guys. You can argue he has had an impressive performance since Golovkin, Sergio Mora, and Peter Quillen, that run that he had. And I'd say the same, yeah, his last. Elite performance was against Gennaro Golovkin, in my opinion. I thought he gave Canelo a decent test, but Canelo was dominating him very easily early in that fight. Very easily. So that looks bad for Jacobs. I think uh, Jacobs would get stopped against Hamim Mangia at 164 right now. I know Hamim Mangia gets a lot of hate, gets a lot of backlash, but I think Hamim Mangia is much fresher than Jacobs. I think Jacobs is past his prime. Last elite fight. You could argue his last good performance was at 160. Maybe if he gets down to 164, we see something from him. But even against, way back against Luis Ares, he looked pretty horrible. I don't know if you guys remember that fight, but way back when he fought Luis Ares in his first fight back uh, from losing against Gennady Lovkin, Luis Ares wasn't punching and... Uh, Gennady Golovkin, I mean, not Gennady Golovkin, Daniel Jacobs had no interest at going at Luis Harris, if, if you guys remember that fight. He looked pretty shit in that fight. 
I did miss both his fights against Tulewski and Dervy and Chico. I have not watched either fight. I only watched highlights for him. And against Chavez Jr., Rosado, and Ryder, he also looked like he looked like shit in those fights. Let's not uh, go PC on this. He looked pretty bad. And I think Hemi Mangia has looked much more impressive. Hemi Mangia, just seeing his Gabriel Rosado put on a much better performance. Non-stop punching from rounds 1 to round 12. Where Jacobs does not have that type of gas tank. We know this. I think Jacobs knows this. So there's no point in expecting the world from Jacobs at this point. I think Jacobs is just a good name. I don't think it's going to do much for him among his resume either. Fighting a guy coming off a loss against John Ryder and arguably coming off two losses against John Ryder and Gabriel Rosado. And God knows what would have happened if Chavez Jr. didn't quit. Chavez Jr. just has zero heart. Absolutely zero heart. So that's Danny Jacobs. Jaime Munguia coming off several good wins. Not good wins. Well, you know, he looked impressive in his wins. Obviously, Jaime Munguia looking at his resume, it lacks thunder at this moment. He he had a good resume, in my humble opinion, at light middleweight. He looked more than impressive at light middleweight. He beat guys like Saddam Ali, a champion. He beat Liam Smith, dropped him, dominated him throughout the fight. He beat decent contenders in Brandon Cook and Takeshi Inoue. He did struggle against Dennis Hogan, but get, yeah, that. what are you going to do? He stopped Gary O'Sullivan at 160, stopped Tyrano Johnson, stopped Camille Shermella, beat Gabriel Rosado on points, and uh, stopped Demetrius Ballard. He has a decent run so far at middleweight, but for a guy who is a former champion, it's hard to be impressed by it. And I think him and Munguia, I know the fight never happened, but I would have expected him and Munguia to beat Danny Jacobs coming off the Mighty Up performance. Because Danny Jacobs looked, I mean, not Danny Jacobs, uh, Jamal Charlo coming off the Mighty Up performance. I guess Martial, it seemed like Jamal Charlo did not want to be pressured. It seemed like Jamal Charlo gassed after six rounds. And Jaime Munguia seems like a guy who has good stamina, just like most Mexican fighters. From all the way from back to Brandon Rios to current day David Benavides. These guys have good stamina. The only Mexican fighter I've ever seen that you can say has bad stamina or unimpressive stamina or like regular stamina is... Uh, what's his name? Canel Alvarez, in my opinion. I don't think Canel Alvarez has the best stamina in the world. He usually takes breaks and rounds. Most Mexicans are not like that. They have all the stamina in the world. You got a guy like Brandon Figueroa. Who's just basically a stamina, high stamina, high action, high motor fighter. That's it. That's all he does. He just punches and punches and punches and punches and punches. He really does not have any defense in back foot game. I'm just going to beat the fuck out of you. That's his point of view. And I thought he beat Stephen Fulton. I thought a draw would have been fair. But if one person won that fight, it was Brandon Figueroa. I did not think Stephen Fulton won that fight. And I don't want to get too off. Topic, but Amy Munguia has good stamina, has a good engine. I don't think uh, Jacobs has that engine at this point with his career. Jacobs was cruising the first six rounds against John Ryder. It was only because John Ryder did not put any, any, at all, any pressure on him. The second John Ryder started putting pressure on him, Danny Jacobs crumbled right in front of our eyes and was hurt badly in round eight or round nine. I do not remember. The pundits missed that. A lot of boxing fans missed that. But he was hurt badly against John Ryder. And John Ryder, he's not that big of a puncher. It's not like he's a David Benavides puncher. It's not like he's a David Lemieux puncher. It's not like he's a Canelo Alvarez puncher. But he hurt Danny Jacobs bad in either round eight or round nine at the tail end of the round. I do not remember which round exactly. So yeah, that's my opinion. Let me hear yours in the comment section below. Are you guys impressed with this fight? Look, it's a step up a bit from Demetrius Bellart. Not a bit. It's a step up. But he's fighting a guy, in my opinion, Gabriel Rosado already beat. And he already beat Gabriel Rosado. I would expect him to fight a better guy. But, you know, you never know. Uh, hopefully, if he gets through Danny Jacobs, we see a better fight. Because I thought he would beat Jamal Charlo. But his team, I guess, isn't as confident. Because Jamal Charlo gave him the rights for Mexican TV. Gave him the rights to international TV. Just wanted it to be on regular showtime. 
That's what the reports are saying. They wanted it to be on regular short time, not even pay per view. What the zone and Golden Boy and Henry McGill wanted, they wanted it to be a co pay per view between the zone and short time. And that's not going to work out. There's only been, what, four co pay per view fights in history? One was made with a respect yeah, between Showtime and HBO. Two was uh, Mike Tyson versus Lennox Lewis between Showtime and HBO. And then three and four were the second and third Fury and Wilder fights between Fox and ESPN. That's it. Obviously, Jamal Charlo versus Jaime Munguia commercially is not on that level. Or even legacy-wise, it's not on that level. So, yeah, I think that the fight... No, I think the fight did fall through from Jaime Magia's side. Jamal Charlo was on board with that fight. Showtime was on board. But I thought Jamal Charlo at that time would be a year out of the ring. And coming off a horrible performance. I thought he was going to get stopped against Jaime Magia late. I'm going to be honest with you. That's what I thought would happen. So, what if Jamal Charlo comes back, gets momentum against... Suleski, I don't think that Himangia will stop him this time. I think Jamal Charlo, at his best, is capable of outboxing Himangia like he did Dvoryanchenko. At his best. But he had an opportunity to get Jamal Charlo not at his best, and they let it go through. Obviously, he's much younger than Jamal Charlo. He has more time on his side, but you know, you never know. So yeah, that's it. I don't want to make this video longer than it already is. Like and subscribe to the video. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. And Sadiq Boxing out.